Okay. I think all looks good. I, I hope we're streaming live. Hi, everybody. Thank you again for joining us this Tuesday afternoon. Um, it's such a beautiful day out. My eyes are going to go back and forth. I'm looking at two different devices. Um, I'm here with my co-host, Michelle Merjani. You can't see her. Hi. <laughs> uh, but hopefully you can hear her. and Or maybe, actually, you probably can see her on Facebook. Um, so we're here to take questions. We're, we're hoping we get some friends that hop on live and ask us questions, anything related to orthopedics, physical therapy, um, ailments, anything. We're, we're looking forward to providing um, valuable information for you guys, our followers, um, our friends, our patients. So um, as we kind of go through this, we'll, um, we'll, we're on the lookout for your questions. So um, Michelle, how is everything going with um, tennis? How are your um, like students doing? Give us a little update on that. <laughs> Everyone's good. All my little kids are good. They're doing great. It's starting in New York. It's like gorgeous outside. I think it's like 70 degrees today and super sunny. So mm -hmm. the kids have been very excited to go back outside and start, you know, another a new routine of like spring, summer tennis. I think everyone's just excited to be outside. I'm excited to be outside and get to, you know, teach the kids, enjoy the weather and nice. looking so, forward to. So when you, when you teach tennis, like are most of the, the kids that you teach been with you for a while now, they're not like entry level tennis players or are they? Um, I have a very good mix. I have kids who are three years old who are just beginners and I'm starting from scratch. I'll have you know, kids actually of any age who've never really played or even adults who I'll mm -hmm. start from the beginning oh, nice. with, or, or maybe I have even adults who played as a kid and then didn't play growing up and then want to get back into it. it. Um, and pretty much everyone I started with, I've kept a great relationship and continued teaching throughout, you know, during the pandemic and as much as I could indoor tennis. And now we're starting to go back out and continue what we did you know, last year. And I think everyone's very much looking forward to it to nice. practice everything. So I I'm curious about this. So I didn't know you, uh, trained adults too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. So it's not just kids. So not just kids. Yeah. A, a beginner tennis player. What are your top three to five tips? Top three to five tips. Um, I think at the beginning, my biggest thing is this is where you focus on the main techniques. Okay. You get your grips correct. You get your footwork correct. Um, you get your, you know, positioning correct when you're going to hit the ball and then maybe your timing. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of like the biggest tips because, you know, it takes a long time to form a habit, mm -hmm. especially something so technical like tennis. You want to perfect at the very beginning at a super young age. And even for me, I had a tough time grasping the technique when I was learning mm -hmm. because I switched so many coaches. I wasn't playing consistently at the beginning that some things were a little imperfect. Okay. So now when I coach, I always try to focus on is your, are your grips correct? Are you stepping with the right foot? You know, are you turning your body the correct position? How are you serving the ball? Little things like that. Nice. And then after a while, not a while, but you know, maybe after some lessons, maybe a year, I start really like nitpicking on things. I yeah. want most of my students to have the, you know, the bare basics and mm -hmm. kind of just build on from there. Okay, cool. Um, so top three, I think you gave us three. That was one, and that was probably one in one a bunch of tips in one. Yeah. Um, probably technique. my next one. Technique was one, right? Technique, one. definitely technique. Yeah. Um, my other tip is it's almost like kind of like physical therapy. We recommend, like, I always recommend you kind of play twice a week, three times a week to really build on top of what you're doing. Cause you know, if you do it once a week, six days apart from something is kind of long. If yeah. you really think about it, it kind of breaks up, you know, what you learned, you kind of forget. And, mm -hmm. you know, to having to start over from what we did, let's say this Monday to next Monday, it's kind of, it's not effective. 
it's okay to repeat and practice you are, but you always want to build on top of what you have. Got it. So that's probably my second tip to, you know, kind okay. of almost stay consistent with lessons and practicing. Got it. And my third tip, honestly, is to enjoy it. Like I think yes. like that. too many people get in their heads, they get too serious, which there's nothing wrong with being serious, mm -hmm. but also remember it's a sport. You're supposed to have fun. Right. It's a, like a little bit of a competition. You're supposed to enjoy yourself. You're not, it shouldn't be torture when you're doing it. So yeah. really try to fall in love with the sport rather than like forcing yourself to like it and be good at it. Cool. Nice. Thanks. That was good. <laughs> um, all right. I don't, I'm, I'm looking to see if any questions popped in. Not to... I think we have a couple. Okay. So let's, let's go through the couple that we got. Okay, one that I see here, which one looks interesting? Um, I think this is a very, I guess some people may not know this, how do you fix a torn ACL? Okay, good question. Um, so if we're talking, and I'm assuming this is probably a full tear, um, so a, a full tear, it's completely disconnected. So the only way to truly repair it is surgery. Um, uh, however, it really depends on if you're an athlete, if you're going back to a competitive sport, um, and, and that usually becomes the number one factor in, in deciding on if it gets repaired or not. Also your age. So we know that the younger we are, the better healing capability we have. Um, and so uh, most people, most athletes do get it repaired. Um, so it's done surgically. Ask me the question again, sorry. How do, how do you how fix a torn right. ACL? Oh, sure, so the surgical procedure, the, the surgeon will take a graft of, of either your own tissue uh, part of your hamstring tendon or your patellar tendon or one from a cadaver um, and will recreate an ACL for you. And so they'll take part of that tendon and they'll take a piece of uh, bone as well and they'll recreate it and almost like drill it into where the ACL sits inside your knee. Um, and that's how the repair process is done. I think to bounce off of that, I think we talk about like the physical therapy needed after it's not just the surgery. Of course. That sure. fixes so it. Any injury, um, that results in, well, any injury is going to have inflammation. Inflammation is actually a valuable part of healing. It's the first stage of healing. So I know we all say anti-inflammatories, how do we combat inflammation? And we're all on this like hunt to lessen inflammation, right? However, we have to keep in mind that inflammation is necessary for how the body will heal. If we interrupt inflammation in its process, then we're probably interrupting the body's normal mechanisms. Um, however, inflammation stinks. It, it feels crummy, your joint hurts, uh, you're achy, your, your tissues are very tender to touch. Um, your, you have swelling, so movement is very difficult. Um, so we all do want to almost speed up healing. Sometimes just moving is, is the number one thing. So um, let me ask you a question. I believe when you, uh, in the injuries that you've had, did you have, have any acute injuries like an ankle sprain or or like a knee sprain? Or anything Every, like? I've had everything under the where, sun. <laughs> where the knee swelled up? knee swelled up to a size of a balloon, you okay. know, you wouldn't. Okay. So, so in that, I would say that the old advice that used to be given to us, even when I was in school, this is what they, they taught was to rest it, ice it, compress it and elevate it. Um, the rice protocol. Uh, and now we've moved away from that because we're realizing, hey, we're interrupting the body's normal mechanisms for healing. So now the number one best thing to do is movement, 
no one's saying get up and run. Uh, however, just if, if we're talking about a knee, just doing gentle movement, doing some isometrics, doing uh, knee bending, knee straightening. So that is the best thing to do initially. Um, as far as physical therapy for any ACL tears or post-operative ACL repairs, um, going to physical therapy is a must. There's no like, oh, I, I might go or my doctor might send me. Absolutely have to go. Um, you have to rehab your body. Um, you have to strengthen the muscles that automatically get shut off when there is swelling. Um, and you have to make sure you go back to normal movement patterns because we know that when the body is injured, it's gonna pick up abnormal movement patterns. And that becomes like secondary problems down the road. So. Let's see. That was a good answer. I think sometimes. Oh, yes. Thanks. <laughs> I think sometimes people think like sur it's surgery and that's set up. I can go home the next day, you know, go back to play. Or no, actually, I feel like the ACL uh, rehab is probably one of the longest. Um, and don't people sometimes start with rehab before surgery? Yep. And then yep. they do preoperative rehab. Um, get, again, uh, ACL tears, the knee swells, um, the swelling inhibits the quad. The quad does not perform. You have like a wobbly knee. So the sooner you can activate the quad, uh, quad muscle, the better off you will be. The sooner you can get the knee moving, the better off you'll be, the less stiffness you'll have. Okay. Um, how about this one? If you work out every day, is it bad for your muscles? Okay, this is a good one. I think this uh, came in from one of our Instagram uh, stories that we did. If you work out every day, is it bad for your muscles? Um, you know, it really depends on the workout. If you're a walker, no. Um, if you do high intensity um, power lifting, yes, you need to rest uh, in between workouts. Um, so every day is going to be tough on your recovery. The muscles, uh, we know that when we, we train muscles, they tear and they have to recover. Um, and if we have anything faulty in our biomechanics with exercising, it'll usually show up as a tendonitis or a joint pain or like an achy hip or, or something like that, um, or shin splints. You know, that's like a, um, a good example for right now. Everyone's starting to go outside, starting walking again, uh, running outdoors, um, and then you're going to see a rise in shin splints. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so if you do uh, weight training, weight lifting, same thing, anything resistance-based, you, you, you want to make sure you don't overdo um, training the same muscles consecutively. If, if your muscles feel sore, leave them alone. Don't, don't work them out every day. So it, it depends on what type of healthy mix of exercise that you partake in daily. So if you're doing one type of exercise one day, then yeah, you can do a different type another day or work different muscles out another day. So I would keep a nice healthy mix. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Or how I feel like, especially nowadays with Zoom, this is a great question. What can my son or what can you do about poor posture? Oh, sure. Um, I feel like we, we got a lot of inquiries about poor posture all of last year. Last year, all the way, I guess, all the way up until now. I mean, um, last year we were all home on the laptops like crazy. I don't even know, do most, do most people use laptops? Like, does anyone use a desktop? Yeah. I think whether it's a laptop or desktop, it's the device is sitting on a desk, what, sure, yeah, you know, whatever it is, an right. iPad. Um, laptops are probably worse. Um, desktops are better, but I know that we, I mean, you yourself, all of, all of your uh, classmates, 
at your university. Everyone, Everyone was on a laptop or an iPad. Right. So I, I think they're, they're, I mean, laptops are way more popular nowadays. Um, and so if you think about it, I mean, I'm on my laptop right now for this. Mm -hmm. So my monitor is lo much lower than it needs to be. It should be up like uh, the level of my forehead. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to keep it low because it sits compact together with the monitor and the keyboard. Um, there's ways around that. If you have a laptop, you can hook up an alternate keyboard and then prop your laptop up on like books or, or something else. Another alternative is that you um, uh, use a standing desk. I know that the, those convertible, I don't even know if they call them hybrids, whatever, those standing desks that you can uh, assemble on top of your existing desk uh, and then low, uh, raise, raise your desk up. Those seem to work out really nice. Um, so, but the, the thing to do for, it's a, uh, do we have an age on the, let's see. The question um, is about a, a young adolescent. I just said my, oh, yeah. my son. My son, okay. So uh, the other sneaky thing with, with um, kids in school is uh, backpacks are way heavier than they should be. And we've known that for a long time. Um, so between heavy backpacks and having more screen time due to the hybrid school system now, um, I would say rest breaks are number one, not just your body, your spine, your legs getting up, your eyes as well. Um, using the glasses that they make now to uh, block the Blu-rays is also a good thing just to, you know, for eye health. Um, and then making sure, and, and I'm doing this incorrectly right now, so how dare I, but um, <laughs> you sit all the way back in your chair and you utilize the backrest. I, I feel like a lot of us just don't do that. Um, Everyone's leaning forward, like yeah, this, kind of using the keyboard. Yeah, because I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it, for me, it's definitely habit. I have to remind myself to utilize my backrest, like lean into this chair. Okay. And that unloads the uh, tremendous amount of compressive forces that go through the discs in our back. Um, that's, uh, that would be my number two advice. Let me see. Mm -hmm. um, and then movement, like get up and stretch, get up and do a few uh, exercises that are, are very good to reverse this sitting forward, sitting rounded, sitting hunched. So anything where you extend back, um, work postural muscles, um, and stretch out the front of your body, chest and, um, abdominals. Actually, we never, we never, we never talk about stretching out your abdominals, but <laughs> most of us have tight abs. It's crazy. <laughs> not tight in the way we want them <laughs> yeah tight in a different way um those would be my number uh my three tips sorry so rest rest breaks um posture mm -hmm. um and then movement okay Trying to see some other questions that we got. Uh, what is needed at home after a knee replacement? Okay, let's see. Um, I'm guessing this is more regarding maybe equipment for staying active and exercising and getting stronger. Um, so depending on uh, your discharge orders, once you leave the hospital, I'm sure they'll provide you with um, anything that's needed, like a portable toilet or things like that. I'm sure this question is not geared towards that type of answer. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> regarding um, 
Hang on one quick second. Sorry, can't control um, doorbells. <laughs> um, so, uh, get back to oh, so any type of uh, equipment that might be needed after a knee replacement. Uh, let's see. I, I, my best advice to that question is definitely consult with your physical therapist. I don't want to assume like you know I would know this patient's status, right? Physical status their strength, the range of motion, things like that. So I'll leave that one alone. However, the best thing to do, um, having had a major surgery like that, being impaired in your walking, having a stiff knee, uh, not having mm -hmm. normal strength uh, would be, and possibly using an assistive device such as a, a cane or a walker, right? I would just clear out your... Um, your walking paths, right? If you think of you're going from your bed to the bathroom, make sure there's no scatter rugs. Um, and this is more like fall prevention and safety. Uh, make sure there's nothing that's going to get caught on the walker if you're using a walker. Um, yeah, just, just make sure you have clear pathways so that there's nothing that could potentially trip you up when you're walking. Um, yeah, that's my, my uh, answer for that one. Okay. Let's see. Is getting a cracking sound in my knee while running? I, oh, I get a cracking sound in my kneecap while running. Is this normal? Okay. Uh, it, it, it probably indicates that you have some tightness uh, around the knee. Um, if your knee bends and straightens fully, the most likely the tightness is outside of the knee. So that means probably the, the, um, the connective tissue that wraps and supports your kneecap um, needs to just kind of be released manually. Uh, okay. Nothing to be alarmed by, but something to definitely address so that it doesn't worsen it doesn't then affect hip mobility, which will definitely affect, you know, uh, your, your knee joints health. So someone asked, what is the fastest way to heal tendonitis in the wrist? Okay, fastest. <laughs> yeah, that question, I feel like, I think we talk about, talked about this last time, but I think there's no way to speed up a recovery. I feel like everyone's different and um, you can do things. You know what? It's, it's, I guess it's kind of like, you, you almost think like you're going to do some biohacking, right? That, yeah. Like oh, good, good nutrition um, good hydration, make sure you have all the key nutrients that your body needs. Um, that is always, uh, a huge plus. Um, I would say don't postpone getting treatment, so whatever that is. So mm -hmm. of course, if we're treating, ten uh, wrist tendonitis, um, or yes. if, I'm sorry, if you have wrist tendonitis, yes, physical therapy is number one. I'm not plugging us. I'm just saying, uh, you don't right away want to go and first course of treatment be like a, an injection. Um, yes, it's going to make the pain go away. However, it will have some ill effects on the, the area that where the injection is, is put around the soft tissues, the ligaments, the tendon itself it could potentially make it more vulnerable to another injury or even some um, degeneration later. Um, mm -hmm. You also want to figure out why you're getting a tendonitis. That's, that's one of the, the things that um, sometimes it's missed, you know, 
I don't know why, but it's one of those things. And, and it might be because we, you know, we all want to get back to whatever we were doing without having this nagging pain. Yeah. So I think it's because of uh, uh, time, you know, we want to speed it up. Um, number one thing to do is to go get a proper assessment by a really great physical therapist, find out why you're getting a tendonitis, let them give you suggestions and steps and a program to fix the root cause of the tendonitis. And then along with that, they'll treat the symptoms of the tendonitis so that you do feel better. Okay. Anything else that sticks out to you? Let's see. Um, this one, let's see, multifaceted, but um, why do I have sharp abdominal pain when I run? Uh, could be a slew of things. If we just think of uh, anything that, you know, I have expertise in such as orthopedics, um, of course, consult with your doctor, you know, um, the abdominal area, um, there's, we have all of our major organs there. Um, if, if your doctor says, Hey, here's a clean bill of health. Um, then I would look at more orthopedic causes such as, um, stiffness in the thoracic spine, mm -hmm. tightness in the abdominal muscles, um, uh, a, um, something, something's not moving well in your body, causing other muscles to either overwork and possibly refer the pain even from the back to the front end to the abdominal region. Um, however, number one thing, any abdominal pain, you speak with your general practitioner, your primary care doctor, and let them advise you first. If nothing is uh, going on medically, then we will look at other orthopedic causes. Okay. Let's see. Which ones do you like? <laughs> um, oh, I think maybe this is a good one. When do you recommend ice versus heat? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, so we went over just before about uh, an acute injury, like an ankle sprain. Um, to, I know it sounds crazy to say this, but to not use ice let the area swell, let your body send those chemical mediators to the area, which is what all that swelling is. It's, it's chemicals that are coming to start their, it's like a project. They have to go mm -hmm. in, identify what's there, uh, start the healing process, uh, let all that take place. Um, so let me, let me think that this one, this one's now a tricky question because ice would always say when you first get injured, however, we, we've retracted that. Um, I would say uh, when it's no longer an acute condition, uh, maybe it's more of a chronic uh, swelling. You can try ice and see if that reduces swelling. However, you always want to, dig deeper and figure out, well, why, why is this joint mm -hmm. or why is this area st still continuing to swell? Um, I don't have a definitive answer on that one. I know that that's, that kind of stinks, but, um, I usually use ice, um, for local tenderness. Like if I have a, if it's been more than two days and I have a local tenderness, Mm -hmm. um, or swelling, I'll use ice. So, uh, like tendon that feels a little sore, um, 
I'll put ice on for 10 minutes, see if it helps relieve some of the discomfort. Um, but not, again, not, nothing, no, we no longer use it for anything, any acute conditions, new injuries until after two days uh, of your body going through its normal process of healing. Um, heat for anything achy, anything stiff. Um, it, I think more than anything, it kind of just calms down the person. Uh, it relaxes them. Mm -hmm. Um, it allows the person to kind of chill out a little bit, thereby allowing their muscles to like release some of that tension that they have. Um, let's see. So ice, new injury after two days, uh, heat, when things are stiff and achy um, and just feel tight. Let's see. Anything interesting you've seen with any of your students or anything in the clinic that kind of piqued your interest? Um, let me try to think. Um, I don't know. My, I guess like the things that always interested me it's where it's like how people tear their ACL or MCL, like what made it happen. I've seen, you know, soccer players or lacrosse players or anyone who really plays on turf when their cleats get stuck in it, you know, and they can't get out and they run too quickly, you know, it just snaps. Mm -hmm. And it's always, I don't know, I've always been interested in like how people tear it because I feel like sometimes it could be the most simplest movement. And then sometimes it's just like super complex and it's kind of like a, oh, wow, I, I can't believe you just tore it type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it was funny that someone asked, how do you fix a torn ACL? Because I've had some people, well, I've seen some people, I feel like playing sports, you know, do pre-op pre rehab, surgery, post-op rehab being perfect. And then I've had friends who do all that, go back to play, tear it again, and kind of just go through the whole process <laughs> over and over. Um, and I don't know, that's always been, some not something cool but something I've always just kind of liked to like hear people's stories about and hear what it was like for them because I feel like it's very different for everyone um I, I I guess it's your question like how does it happen or why does it happen sometimes yeah I guess why does it happen sure so um I I think you actually just spoke about it just before um the foot gets planted and the body keeps moving. Um, and that just puts that Does it. on the knee. Um, sometimes uh, also the foot's planted and someone gets kind of hit um, from the outside. Side. Side. So I think, uh, I'm not surprised that it happens because that's a pretty traumatic situation. Yeah. Um, and then it's more common in females. I don't know if you ever heard about that in, in any of the sports that you play. I haven't. Yeah. So it's, it's um, we have, uh, our, hold on one second. Oh, wow. Okay, so just a, a, a few reasons why it's, a, it's more common in, in females. Uh, we tend to have a little bit more laxity in, mm -hmm. or, or more mobility than, than guys do. Um, I, I have to look up a, a few of the reasons I just don't recall. Um, Trying to think if there's a, a diff, difference, be, something with, with hormonal difference. Um, and then also our quad to hamstring ratio is different. We have, we tend to have stronger quads where men have more of an equal balance between quad and hamstring strength. Um, and so when you kind of tune in to some ACL prevention programs that they run, 
usually, I don't think it's high school level. I think it's collegiate level. Um, I, I don't know though, only because I don't work with that mm -hmm. um, population, but they do training to um, like jumping and landing training just to mm -hmm. reteach the, well, not reteach, I'm sorry, to kind of so make certain muscles activate. Okay. Um, I, I would say I'm not the specialist on a ACL um, tears. Um, and there's probably more newer research that I, I am not up to date with. So I apologize, mm -hmm. but um, I know that there's key differences between us males and females that make us more predisposed to tearing. Um, and those are the, the few things that I recall. Um, ah, trying to think. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else. Nothing on your end? Nothing. I feel like we pretty much covered most of the topics from today. Okay. Let me see if there was anything I wanted to go over. Um, there was actually, I got a, a call from a patient yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I think she had an acute disc herniation about a month and a half ago. And she was uh, a little concerned that she was still limping. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she actually had like a true sciatica where the disc herniated, there was local inflammation around the nerve root. Mm -hmm. And then she had symptoms of sciatica down her leg. And so anytime she would put weight on that leg, it just sort of rejolted the pain. And so okay. what happens is I, I would say at this point along the, where she is in, in this, in her healing, um, limping right now, I'm not too concerned about because I know that most likely it's there due to a habit that she picked up from when this all started. Um, and so I explained that to her. So sometimes, well, most times, uh, we have an injury and then your body goes through its course of healing for that injury, sometimes better or sometimes faster for some individuals. Um, and then there's secondary effects of that initial injury. And, and sometimes people are, are left with that and they have no idea about it. Um, and then mm -hmm. it shows itself as, as another condition, like a, like a tendinopathy or a tendinitis. Um, okay. like tight muscles in one particular area. So that was, um, it was, a, it was a good question that she asked. Um, but I thought it would be cool to kind of talk about that here, that a lot of times your body's going to go into protective movement patterns because of an injury. Um, because, and so our goal now that's our job to help her to take away that mm -hmm. limb, get rid of her limb. So yeah. I'm trying to see if there was any more. Talked about that. Yeah. I think we covered everything today, unless we had questions from Facebook or Instagram. I don't I don't see anything. Um yeah. So we went over cracking sound in the kneecap, um, poor posture, abdominal pain with running, um, when to use heat and when to use ice. Mm -hmm. If you should, is it bad for your muscles to work out every day? Um, how, how is an ACL repaired? Uh, let's see. What else? 
we went over oh a knee replacement what to do at home right mm -hmm. or what to have at home for a knee replacement um and then yeah i think that was it did i miss anything or i don't think so okay cool um so yeah, this was cool. I, yeah. I think uh, for the next one, maybe we'll come in with like a topic. Um, yeah, we'll see because we, we, yeah, we'll see if we get more people to come on and ask questions. Um, again, yeah, we'll, we're, we'll be doing this in two weeks from today. Same time, same place. Mm -hmm. And um, please send us any questions that you have. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to give valuable information to you guys for anything orthopedic related, anything physical therapy related, movement, fitness related. Um, and uh, thank you for tuning in and, and, and we hope you can at least uh, watch the replay. Thank you. Okay, bye everyone. Bye.